Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 200. Yes, you heard that correctly. We have made it to 200 episodes. And today I'm doing one on my favorite format, Commander. I'm looking at the top five best and worst Commander combos out there. I know I'm gonna be talking about your kids here and I just wanna let you know that not all kids are the same. Some of them are great and some of them you might not want to bring out in public, especially if you're playing EDH. EDH is a casual, fun format. It is not Legacy. Legacy is your spiky, win on turn one, wonderfully overpowered Corvette format. There are lots of combos in EDH. Lots of combos that make me want to eject people from the table or at least bring out a super competitive deck to play against them, to police the table and turn it back into a fun interactive group game. Now, I'm not arguing that any of these combos should be banned. What I'm arguing is that you should be prepared to deal with these combos. Anytime you see a Hermit Druid hit the table, you must kill it. Never let someone untap with a Hermit Druid. Their whole deck is gonna end up in their graveyard. A Necrotic Ooze is gonna show up and kill you. Machaeus the Unhallowed looks very innocent until you start looking at Triskillian or Persist creatures. The guy's nuts. Splinter Twin is not a friendly, fun card. This is a card that should tell the whole table, kill that player. Anybody who plays Poison in EDH, watch out for them. Don't feel bad about going after them early. Niv-Mizzet, wonderful general who should never be enchanted with curiosity. Somebody even tries, that's when you're a counter spell player. You need to go wake them up, shake them violently and say, hey, please stop this or we end the game now. And Rings of Bright Heart, wonderful EDH card. When somebody starts to put out Basalt Monolith or mana producing artifacts, you just gotta be careful. You can't let that stuff happen. So in focusing on each of these combos, I'm also gonna point out some ways to stop these combos so that you're prepared to deal with these overpowerful combos. Deadeye Navigator, I know is on a lot of people's please ban list because of how it combos with Mystic Snake, Stone Horn Dignitary and Duplicant, to, not to name 20 other cards that it just crushes the table with. Be prepared for this. Trickbind is my favorite. Stops the activated and triggered abilities for the remainder of the turn, letting you guys get into another turn and have some time to deal with that particular player. Void Slime is also a wonderful honorable mention, and if you can put a card like Trick Mine on an Isochronic Scepter, it allows you to police the entire team. The number four spot here, I've got the classic Exquisite Bond, Sanguine Bond. Whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. Nice little loop that kills your opponents. Don't come into EDH without a way to stop enchantments. A lie is one of my favorite underplayed enchantment removal cards. Destroy target enchantment with buyback. You can bring it back to your hand. What a great card. Similarly, for dealing with artifact combos, Shattering Pulse is a wonderful card to do that. The number three spot here, I've got Reanimator. On turn one, when you see somebody search up or naturally play a Bazaar of Baghdad, you're in trouble. You need to be prepared for reanimation. And the only card on this whole video that I'm actually advocating to be destroyed is Iona, who should die in flames. Fire, the rest fire, of the cards fire. here can definitely be dealt with. Man Acceleration, into Reanimator, the whole table can be in trouble. Fortunately, Wizards has been printing some great answers. You must have an answer to Reanimator if you're going to play fair in EDH. Containment Priest is wonderful and very inexpensive at this point, about $15. Grave Robber is one of my absolute favorites because once you flip the Grave Robber, you can start stealing their cards. Graft Digger's Cage is a wonderful fair answer. Trinket Mage is a great way to go get it. And Scavenging Ooze is extremely reasonable right now. It's been reprinted both as a promo and in M14. I would pick them up now. Even consider something like Rest in Peace. It's a nice answer that just shuts down those graveyard shenanigans. 
The number two spot here, I've got Riku of Two Reflections with Palancron. Card Kingdom, where I play a lot, had EDH tournaments for a while, and Palancron was one of the first cards to go to be added to the ban list. When you won one of those tournaments, you got to ban a card. Palancron just creates so much mana. It's crazy when you can copy it with Riku or do anything to bring down its casting costs or have lands that produce multiple mana. My favorite answers for combinations like this are quick ways that kill Riku that can't be countered, stopping people people from casting multiple spells with something like Aether's Horn Cannonist, or Meddling Mage. Just name the pesky part of the combo. If it's somebody's commander, name their commander. They can't play it. The number one spot here, I've got Elish Norn and Living Plane. This is more an example of all the different types of land destruction that are out there. This is one of the meanest because it turns your own land into giant creatures and kills everybody else's. I recommend cards like Bribery or Gather Specimens for this type of combo. Nothing makes someone cry more than to see their own Elish Norn wipe their own lands. Dealing with the enchantment can be a little bit tough though. I personally have been enjoying Jester's Cap recently. You see those combo decks that have 20 different tutors in them and only one or two win conditions. So much fun to pull the win conditions out of that deck. It's like playing Iona against them. They have nothing to do but really concede after you pulled out their win conditions. Now we're moving into the most fun combos out there. Maelstrom Wanderer is an amazing card. He can be used for evil with Jockle Hops. That will make an entire table pretty much concede. But he can also be used to do some crazy fun stuff like play Time Spiral. Give yourself six land available. Give everybody else a new hand. The number four spot here, I've got Prophet of Crufix. This is another one of those very powerful cards that could be used for good or for evil. My favorite at this point is playing cards like Gavany Township, Alchemist Refuge. You're able to pump your whole team and cast creatures on other people's turn. The number three spot here, I've got Aura Shards. This is a wonderful table cop. And two cards that go really well with it are Stone Cloaker and White Mane Lion. Both of them have flash, and both of them can be returned to your hand to activate the Aura Shards again and again and again. Stone Cloaker even has the added ability to help you deal with those graveyard decks, those reanimator decks. Stone Cloaker is one of the few white cards that I put in almost every white EDH deck, outside of maybe a super friends deck where I literally have no creatures. The number two spot here, I've got Sun Titan and all the fun things that you can do with him. Sun Titan wears swords really well, combos with Quasali Pride Mage and Safi. Even cards like Wall of Omen, which is a nice blocker, do so much more utility for you when you're able to bring it back every turn. The number one spot here, I've got Notion Thief and Dak Faden two of the best Grixis color cards out there. This allows you to have someone else discard two cards while you draw two extra cards. Notion Thief is also the wonderful cop that you have in a deck to shut down Jaces. Be a little bit careful when your opponent plays Consecrated Sphinx, you could be decking yourself. I would definitely pick up Notion Thieves right away. They're about to jump through the roof because of Origins. The new Time Twister has some interesting speculation going on with him. I have liked him so much in EDH and in Legacy, it's well worth playing. If I missed any combos that you guys really like in EDH or hate, please put them in the comments. I'd be happy to hear about them. Thank you guys so much. If you guys can shatter that subscribe button and become subscribers to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. I'm trying to get up to 10,000 subscribers before I head to LA this fall so I can check out the YouTube creator space that's there. Also, thank you to everybody else who is out there supporting the channel. Got some wonderful people on Patreon that make this channel possible. If you would like to help support the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. I'm trying to buy one new piece of recording equipment or upgrade something every month. I've got some cool new stretch goals that went into the Patreon account over there. Um, I'm going to have a whole video coming up on that later. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we got a lot of new videos coming out. I'm doing a review of Game Finder. I'm working on green, amazing EDH cards and an in-depth look at Death and Taxes here in the next two weeks. Take care.